Okay, folks, we're going to move on and talk today about flat belts. Um, we've already covered a lot of, of information on V-belts. Uh, a flat belt is made of rubber, leather, or synthetic material. It is a wide strip that runs between two pulleys. And this is a good example of a flat belt. This is actually one off of our molder. And um, the advantage of using a flat belt is that it transfers more power. So when you're having, running the molder and you've got large cutter heads, sometimes seven inches wide and, and upwards of five, six inch diameter, um, you need a lot of power to, turn, to uh, turn those motors and especially the, the depth of the cut that we're trying to do. And this is why we, um, these machines are set up for uh, flat belts the way they are. Um, the advantage reduces vibration in high speed systems. Very little maintenance required. Torque loss and tracking. So in, in terms of torque loss, Yes, there is a small amount that you would lose. Tracking can be an issue if your pulleys get out of alignment, uh, but it's something that can be corrected with some maintenance. And um, where are we going to find flat belts? We use them on molders, we use them on overhead routers. And um, yeah, so you do find some of these around the shop. Uh, they're not uncommon. I used to use them a lot on shapers at one time, but They've now changed that to a fused or a uh, vulcanized V-belt now. Uh, specialized belts called timing belts are sometimes used. And this is what a timing belt is. And um, interesting that this is actually, uh, there's, a, there's a, a pulley with the notches in the pulley to uh, connect with the timing belt. And what it does is actually it's more defined fit uh, these, be these belts mesh with the tooth pulley and they create less slippage. So we used to have a drill press uh, that ran off a belt drive system and it had a timing belt similar to this one. Um, we used to, it used to be called the multi-bore but we, we don't have that machine anymore. But if you look around the shop you may find one or two other machines that might use that type of belt. Um, we're going to move on here now to the uh, gear drive system. Uh, not widely used in the woodworking industry, although they, they do show up in uh, some secondary equipment. Um, you will find gear drives on our planers. Um, no, sorry, that's a chain drive that I was thinking of. Uh, gear drives show up actually in our glue roller. Uh, that's a gear drive system. Uh, it's a series of, of uh, gears that are meshed together. Uh, many types of gear drives. We have spur gears, helical cut, worm mesh gears, and bevel gears. And we're going to explain a few of these as we go along. Um, spur gears are the most basic gear drive. They transfer power from the motor to the arbor in a parallel line. This is the system if we were to take more of the guarding off of that glue roller uh, that we have at the hot press. This is the system that you would see inside that. Um, helical gear, we see that showing up in portable power tools. Um, hand drills, miter saws, often are gear driven. Uh, some of them are belt driven too, by the way. This transmit a higher load and much more power is available to you by going to a gear system. Looks like a spur gear, but the teeth are twisted along a helical path. And Worm mesh gears transfers power between the shafts that are perpendicular to one another. Where you would see something like this is in the adjustment on a table saw to raise and lower a saw blade uh, is often done with a system like this. Used for very high power transmission where decrease in speed is also required. And it's something it cannot run in, in reverse. But this is something if you get underneath the table saw quite often you'll see adjustments. Um, for the, um, the height of the blade and so on for adjustment and for angle for the gear for the changing the, the angle as well. Uh, the bevel gear, this picture here should give you a bit of a clue uh, where you might see this. This can be used for forward and reverse. You transmit power perpendicular to the drive shaft. So this is a drill press actually is what you would where you would see this um, series of, 
uh, for the lock key for installation of the drill bit. And where else would we see that? I'm just trying to think. Uh, power tools. Um, well, just nothing comes to my mind off the top of my head. Chain drives. Chain drives, they use a chain and sprocket design, not widely used in the wood industry because of the dust environment. Although we do have a chain drive system showing up in our straight line rip saw to run the feed table, or the feed chain, sorry. And our thickness planer incorporates a chain and sprocket drive for the feed rollers. You often see chain drive systems used on conveyors, uh, turntables and that sort of thing uh, because they, they run at relatively low speeds. Uh, the ball and screw drive system, this is used uh, extensively on our CNC router. Uh, it's a very accurate method of moving um, equipment. Used on our CNC router table, provides high accuracy and precision movement with no backlash. So if these things are fine-tuned and working properly, then we um, can expect um, a great deal of accuracy with these types of equipment.